Okay, so in this video I want to talk about something very important that is not actually mentioned in a lot of textbooks on classical mechanics. For some reason it just does not seem to appear in a lot of places, but it's still such a central concept to mechanics. So what I want to talk about is the effect of damping forces in a physical system. So a damping force is essentially use of force that is related to some damping constant, which is similar to the stiffness of of a spring or, or the spring constant and it's multiplied by the velocity of the object. So if you consider a simple spring mass system with a damper attached to it, what the damper is actually going to do is it, go, it is going to exert a force that opposes the motion of the object, but it is going to absorb energy every time the object moves. So unlike a spring, the energy that is transpassed to the actual damper is not converted back and forth indefinitely, it is actually being absorbed every time, so the amplitude of the oscillations of a physical system will always decrease when you have a damping uh, involved. So damping is not necessarily just a physical kind of device, damping is anything that actually opposes the velocity of an object. So to give you another example, friction is an example of a dam damping force because essentially what it is doing is it is supposing the, f um, the actual motion of the object but, and, and sometimes you might see it as being some kind of damp not damping constant but static friction coefficient or kinetic friction coefficient times the normal force that the surfaces ex exert on one another but friction is in general more related to some damping term times the velocity and the same is can be said for air uh, air drag or air resistance. So those are some of the main things that you will encounter when you deal with damping forces in a system. So if we want to fully analyze a practical real system, we need to take into account the effect that these things have. Not air, nothing in real life is an ideal system where there's no friction and no air drag and no air resistance and all those things. So. Uh, we need to take this into account. Another thing that might happen is if you have some kind of thing moving inside of a fluid or liquid like water, then that's going to have damping as well because anything that has it, it's going to be called viscous damping. So due to the viscosity of a, of a liquid or, or a, a, some kind of fluid, you're also going to have damping due to that. So energy can be absorbed in many different ways. And these are external factors that we simply cannot avoid because in the real world, we don't actually have a way to get in rid of these things. There's always gonna be, um, at least to a certain degree, these things are going to be present. So how do we analyze this in terms of Lagrangian? Well, first of all, let's derive the equations of motion using the uh, Newtonian approach and then we do the Lagrangian. So the Newtonian approach is going to give us the following. We draw the free body diagram so we have the mass here. Now we're going to assume there's no friction, the only damping force is the one on this damper here so we're going to have the force of the spring and now the damping force is also going to oppose the motion of this object here. So basically we're going to have x, y like this so kx, this is going to be cx dot, because remember that's damping constant times velocity. And now if we write the equations of motion, this simply turns out to be minus kx minus cx dot. So that's the equation of motion of this system. Now, the Lagrangian approach is a little bit more complicated because we need to take into account the fact that how do we account for a force if the Lagrangian only takes into account kinetic and potential energy? Well, I am here to introduce you to a concept. Oops, let me just spell this out. So, Lagrangian. So, in the Lagrangian approach, there is something called a Rayleigh, Rayleigh dissipation function. So, basically, what it it, the way it's defined is as follows. You have some Rayleigh dissipation, dissipation function. It is going to be related to energy, so it has units of joules. And it is defined as follows. So we have half of some sum of terms. So we have some damping constant Ci. So I goes from 1 all the way to the number of elements uh, present in the system. And then this is going to be multiplied by some generalized coordinate velocity squared. So this is the Rayleigh 
dissipation function. So in the case of this system, our, our dissipation function would be as follows. We only have one damping occurring, so we have damping constant, and now we have this term here. So this is going to be exactly the same effect as this force, but now this is a kinetic energy kind of equation, whereas this is just a force. And it is such a simple concept, it's such a useful equation, I honestly don't know why you don't see this more often in textbooks, but hey, I'm here to introduce you to it so you know you can actually do this kind of analysis in Lagrangian mechanics as well. Okay, so having that, what we need to do is we need to find out what the kinetic energies of the system are. So in this case, we have half of m times x dot squared. And now we're obviously going to have this term here, but we need to th really think about how this is going to fit into the equation. Well, it turns out that the way this is going to fit into the equation is actually we're going to put it into the Euler-Lagrange equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to have d over dt of Lagrangian with respect to the velocity plus Lagrangian of dissipation function with respect to velocity as well. And <coughs> all of this is going to be equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the position or the displacement. So this is how you would include this dissipation energy into the equation. So this is going to be our total kinetic energy for the system. Now what we need to take into account is essentially just the coefficient here. So basically we're going to have potential energy equals to half of k x squared. So now if we put those two together, we're going to get L equals to T minus V, which is equal to half of mx dot squared minus half of kx squared. And at this point, we're ready to just plug stuff into the Euler-Lagrange equation. So let's solve for the first part. So we always start off with the displacement kind of derivative. So we're going to have, well, this is zero. This is going to be minus 2, sorry, 2 over 2, that's 1, so this is kx. Now for this quantity here, we're going to have mx dot, and if we take the time derivative with respect to this one, we're going to get this, so we're going to have this right here, that becomes mx double dot, and now finally, if we get the dissipation term, we have to differentiate it with respect to, and I probably should have written, so I just forgot about the notation, this is with respect to x, because that's our coordinate. I was using the gen generalized coordinate instead, so this is dx, x dot, x dot, x dot, so that's all good. And now if we look at this function here, well that's just going to be cx dot squared. Okay, so all we do now, and that's actually going to be not squared, but just that. So the, the two comes down, cancels out with that half, and now we're going to have the following. So we're going to have mx double dot plus cx dot equals to minus kx. We move this to the other side, so that gives us the following function. So we're going to have minus kx minus cx dot. So that is essentially it. This is going to be the solution to our system. Well, not the solution, but the equation of motion. And we noticed that we derived this using the Lagrangian formulation, and it wasn't really that complicated. I mean, the great thing about the Lagrangian approach is that it is very systematic. You have just one single equation, and all you need to do is put everything into that equation. So you get your Lagrangian, which is just your kinetic energy minus potential energy. And once you are at that step, everything else just becomes a matter of differentiating things and putting them into the equation, but you get exactly the same thing. Now, of course, with these simple examples, you will notice that the Newtonian mechanics approach is much easier, much more straightforward to do. But in general, it is good to have two different approaches to arriving at the same thing. And you'll notice that energy methods, which is what the Lagrangian is about, are a lot more convenient in certain problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to now take 
very careful note of this so now our Euler Lagrange equation is going to be a more com or at least a more complete version of it is going to be written in this manner we're going to take into account the, f the fact that there's a dissipation energy and that it, that is described by this function here and what we're going to do is we're going to analyze more problems so that we can get a better grasp of how to use Lagrangian mechanics